Hi, this is Susan from Farah US. I'm going to give you some short tutorial on the FA Global Patient Registry. The first place you want to land when you try to create an account in the registry is this website, fapatientregistry.org. Up here is the URL. If you click on the Enroll or Login button, it'll bring you to the FA Global Patient Registry. You'll see that it comes up as a healthy pulse info frame. That just is a reference to the company that we worked with to develop this registry. And so when you get to this page, you'll either be able to create a new account in this area towards the bottom, or if you already have an account, you'll log in with I already have an account. So let's click there just quickly to show you what that looks like. And essentially a page will come up that will allow you to put your username, which is the email that you used to set up the account, and the password. If it's been a while since you visited the FA Global Patient Registry, um, you can type in your username and click the forget password. An email will be sent with you with, to you with a temporary password and then it'll allow you to log in and create a password that's specific um, to something you'll remember. Let's go back and look about setting up. This description here um, also talks about information that will be saved, um, that you'll be able to consent to uh, the registry coordinators contacting you about any eligible trials or communicating with you about information. Um, that is important uh, for you to know about treatments that are in development. What you will do to set up an account is you'll choose the language that you have a preference for. I'm choosing English. And then you're going to have two choices here. The first choice is I'm a patient registering for myself. And this choice is for any patient who is a legal adult and for anyone who's assisting an adult patient with registration. So the system is designed that if the patient themselves is 18 or older or of legal age in your country, that that was the choice. The first choice is the one you should choose. The second choice is I am registering on behalf of a patient and this choice is for parents and proxies. So proxies would be defined by anybody who is assisting adult patients in registering and who are going to manage uh, receiving emails, reminders about updating information. So we recognize that not everybody has an email or access to the internet. And this second choice would be for people who are going to assist and assist in managing um, accounts for several people. So this, as again, this choice allows for registering multiple patients under one username. And remember, your username is the email that you use to set up the accounts. So I'm going to register um, on behalf of a patient. When you click on that second button, you get register additional patient with current proxy account, or you get to create a new proxy account for a patient. For the first time that you're creating a, an account, even if you're going to create account for multiple people, you're going to create a new proxy account for that patient, and you'll register that patient. Once you've created one account and you want to go back in and create additional accounts for other people, whether it's children or it's other adults that you're helping manage those accounts, then you're going to register additional patient with current proxy account. If I click on I am a patient registering for myself, you'll continue with new registration. In this case, it'll be an isolated account. There'll be no other accounts linked to it. Now let's assume that I've uh, set up my account. What happens is you'll be asked a couple of questions with username, you'll receive an email to set up a password, and you'll be able to um, go into this site to be able to log in. So I would put in my username and my password, and when I log in, so I'm gonna choose the patients for whom I want to update the information, and a dashboard will appear. What you'll see on the dashboard is an informed consent. So when you set up a new account, 
you will first have to fill out an informed consent. It will be the first thing that pops up when you create your new account. It is done through DocuSign. And so what you'll do is you'll be able to scroll through. There are some buttons at the bottom um, that you will have to X, that you agree and understand that you've read the consent. Um, you'll hit the accept button and then you'll be able to enter an electronic signature. You do not need to print out this document and sign it. It's all done electronically. And on my dashboard, I'll get a green button that says, yes, I've signed it. Once I've signed the informed consent, it allows me to go forward and um, complete the other forms. The next form that I would fill out is the FA Global Patient. And this form is the demographic information. So it's going to ask um, information about address, date of birth, and on the second page of it, it will ask about um, whether you are involved with clinical trials, uh, whether you want to be contacted about eligible clinical trials, and whether you would provide any biospecimens like a tissue or a blood sample. And when that form is completed, again, a green button will come up that says that that form has been submitted. The FA Global Patient Profile, is a, you are able to edit that at any time. And the reason that I tell you that is the forms that are down at the bottom, FA Diagnosis, FA Functional Mobility, FA Health Economics, FA Medical History, and FA Quality of Life. These are all forms that are gonna ask specific information they will take you anywhere from about five to 15 minutes to complete for each one. But once you close that form and submit it, that form is currently closed for 12 months. Right now, we're asking patients to update information on a yearly basis. You will receive an email to remind you that your form is about to open and that you can update that information. But you'll see a date appear here that tells you when that form is going to reopen and that date appears about three weeks or so um, prior to that form being available. So you'll see on the left hand side, I've completed the FA diagnosis for this patient. I can view it by looking at the um, viewing glass. If I have a pencil icon, it means that that form can be edited and can be opened, filled out and submitted. So just to remind you, no fill form can be partially filled out. You do, once you open a form, you do need to complete it. So things to have um, in front of you or to remind you, uh, there are questions about what your GAA repeat expansion size is, and that is um, the one item that most people have to find the form or try to remember that information. The rest of the information is pretty self-explanatory and something that you are likely to remember without having to find additional paperwork. On the bottom here is just a world map that shows you um, the number of people that have registered around the world. So that is a good overview of what you will see when you create an account in the FA Global Patient Registry. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact the registry coordinator at fagpr at curefa.org.